So once you've set up your persona or toolkit after you've installed the software and you've booted it for the first time, one of the first steps that uh, you'll need to do is to, to visit the HTTP interface of this host and then proceed to start entering some of the information so that you can make this host fully functional. So we're going to look at uh, a screen that's uh, showing a persona or toolkit right now. Uh, this host is running on a, a virtual machine just for demonstration purposes. And we've just installed it from the ISO image and we haven't done any configuration for this host yet. So if we look on the left hand side, uh, we'll notice that there's uh, a yellow area that's been highlighted. It says that we need to fill out the administrative information for this host. So if we click on this, we're going to have to authenticate ourselves and our browser may show us a message that says that uh, this is a, a host that doesn't have a, a security certificate installed. So we normally have to proceed uh, to this by going around what the browser is suggesting that we do. We're going to be given a, an authentication screen next. When we first uh, created our server, we were told to fill out a, a new user that has administrative access. So we're going to use that user instead of using just the root account that was set on the host. Once we authenticate, it's going to open up the administrative info page and we can begin to fill out some of the information that's required. So again, we're going to have this big yellow warning that says that some of these items aren't complete. The way that we fill this information out is to first click on this little field below that says edit. And then we'll be given a dialog box where we can fill out everything. There's also another little field here that says subscribe to the person or user list. If you haven't done so and you click this, it'll take you to a, a separate page where you can subscribe your email uh, address to this list so that you can receive notices about person or software or participate in the discussion about some of the, the problems that users around the world may be having. And lastly, we have to fill in a lot of longitude and latitude. This should be accurately reflect where your host is located around the world. If you don't know how to figure this information out, you can always use a tool like Google Maps and try to map out specifically what your lo longitude and latitude may be. Once you click on OK, we get a little field here that says that the host information has been updated, but we have to save to fully uh, make these changes stick on the, the server itself. There's one last field we can fill out in the administrative information. It's uh, adding this host to any number of communities. So we can manually specify a community. Let's say we want to join the Internet2 community. We can also check and see if there are any popular communities that are pulled down from the person or dashboard. In this case, we don't have a, a current list, but after a couple of hours of operation, a new list will be downloaded. We can always come back at a later date and add other communities. So once we're satisfied that this information is, is set, we're going to click Save. We'll get a dialog box that tells us that information is being saved and services are going to be restarted. Once this completes, we can go back to the main page and see that everything has been filled out. So if we go back to the local services page now, you'll see that all that information is filled in at the top here. And any services that were not running before uh, will now have been restarted with the information saved and we'll be able to, to use some of these for measurement purposes later on.